Hey friends, it's PL and I'm down at the church and standing next to my pulpit here. I went ahead and lit that first candle in our Advent wreath, the candle of hope, because I'm not sure if we're going to have worship tomorrow or not. It's just starting to uh, have some freezing drizzle out there. So stay tuned to my Facebook page and we'll make that call in the morning. So I wanted to give you just a little bit of a message about where we're at here. We're in Jeremiah chapter 33, and Jeremiah is one of our major prophets, meaning that Jeremiah, as a major prophet, just gets more biblical ink than our minor prophets do. He has a lot of uh, biblical experience here, um, spanning more than five different kings of Judah during his time that he prophesied. He prophesied to the northern kingdom of Israel before their fall and also for Judah down in Jerusalem. So that's where we're at. We are in the holy city, Jerusalem, and they are just on the cusp of exile. If we remember last week when, with King Josiah, he was a good king and he brought the people of Israel or Judah back to God. And so God says, I'll hold off for a little while. I'm not going to send the Babylonians in just yet. Well, now is the time. The Babylonians are just about ready to take over the holy city and not just take over, but really destroy it. They're going to destroy the temple, and they're going to burn down houses, which also means that there's not going to be a lot of food because the crops are going to be burned, as well as the livestock, and it's just going to be a very dark and desolate time for Jerusalem, for the holy city. Well, Jeremiah is in prison right now during all of this because he was speaking truth to power. And he got thrown into prison. And so he is locked up and just uh, in, in the temple courts. And he is wailing to God. Jeremiah is sometimes called the weeping prophet because his, his time in ministry was a difficult one. The speaking truth to power was not easy. And time and time again, he, he cried out to God. It's like, God, are you there? Because it just seems really, really, really silent right now. And God basically says, you ain't seen nothing yet, Jeremiah. It's going to get worse. Well, here he is. He's got his beloved city crumbling all around him. The bad boy Babylonians have now taken over, besieging the city, and they will take Jeremiah as well as others into exile for some 70 years. I think if I was Jeremiah, I would uh, be crying out to God too. Have you been there? When God seems ever so silent? I know this past Sunday night, Pastor Ryan from Scandia Free preached a wonderful message on Habakkuk, who was also uh, one of our prophets, um, prophesying during a dark and desolate time as well. And Ryan spoke about the the darkness that some of our farmers are, are feeling during this, this season. Some didn't get their crops out and uh, tough time. Maybe you're feeling a little bit dark and desolate as well. And so God says to Jeremiah, he brings this message of hope in our verses for our text for tomorrow. And we are in Jeremiah chapter 33, verses 14 through 18, if you want to take a look at that. God is saying to Jeremiah, hold steady, hold on, because I am sending a light in the midst of all of this darkness. Man, couldn't we all use just a little bit of light? And it's going to come from David's line. In other words, God is going to raise up a king out of King David's line, a king that will rule forever <clears throat> on not just the throne of Israel, but also the throne of heaven. So who do you suppose that is? Jesus. That's right, Jesus. 
In those days and at that time, I will raise up a righteous descendant. Some translations read a righteous branch from King David's line. He will do what is just and right throughout the land. In that day, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this will be its name. The Lord is our righteousness, our righteousness. So God is saying, do not despair, because you know what? Despair immobilizes us. When we are in despair, we just can't see any light. We can't move, can we? But hope inspires us. It inspires us to move. It frees us, and it frees us to also help other people that might be uh, going through a dark and, and destitute time. So let the light in, friends. Let the light in. Tomorrow we step into Advent. Advent 1, hope. I want to be in the light as you are in the light. I want to shine like the stars in the heaven. O oh Lord, be my light and be my salvation. Because all I want is to be in the light. A little DC talk as you rest tonight. Hopefully we'll see you in the morning and then you'll get a little bit more of the rest of the story. So bye for now.